And it's my pleasure to welcome to the show now Liz from The Elite, a lizard publishing company, as well as two of her authors, Victoria, and joining us via Zoom from Ottawa, I believe, Peter. So welcome to the show, first of all, Liz and Victoria in studio. Thank you for having us. And Peter on Zoom. Oh, well, it's great to have you all here. And uh, Liz, let's start a little bit uh, with the Elite Lizard Publishing Company. Tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, what you do. Well, I am a traditional publisher here in Cornwall. And I publish uh, authors from all over the world. And uh, recently I've published uh, Victoria and Peter King, and that's why they're here today, to showcase their books. So I'm very happy and excited to be here. Absolutely. So let's get to know uh, our, our distinguished uh, author guests a little <laughs> bit more. And we'll start with you, Victoria. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how the writing bug uh, came to bite you, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been writing since I was um, 13. I always excelled in English. And I've had a lot of friends push me recently about sharing my poetry. And I had recently lost someone I was very... I'm very close to last year and I started writing all my feelings about it out in form on poetry and page so and I decided to put it together and then Liz was kind enough to read it and help me put it out there for everyone to see. Amazing so talk to us a little bit more about that work uh, so it's a, a compilation of, of your poetry? Yeah it's a compilation of my poetry from pretty much the day that I found out as time went on it's actually a the point of the book essentially is that grief never actually fully ends so but eventually you do find healing throughout the journey and you do have moments of tears and crying and stuff like that um like i'm coming up to i just found out this year this month that just passed that it's going on a year that since he passed and it's been really emotional for me this month i won't lie so uh, uh. i've been writing since then too Wow, so there's a d definitely a healing uh, element mm -hmm. to your writing, I suppose. Yeah, it helps me heal and it helps me process and think, so that way I don't like bottle everything up, essentially. Wonderful. And obviously, uh, uh, writing is something that's been part of your life, you've yeah. mentioned, uh, but did you ever think that you would uh, be holding your own published book in your, in your hands? Um, so, funny thing is, I talk about manifestation a lot, and last year, uh, back in November, I said, I had this like train of thought that I want to put everything that I'm feeling in a book and I want to entitle it Pieces of Me and I wanted to dedicate it to my daughter and her father. So I figured I just kind of like put it in my head. The cover page on my book is actually me. I took that photo in December saying this will be the cover page for my book and I thought of that and then next thing you know it my friend tagged me in a post for Liz. And I, needless to say, I manifested it in a sense, but I didn't think it would come so fast, <laughs> per se. Oh, that's fantastic. So. Uh, testament to the, the great work that Liz is doing. <laughs> uh, and uh, Peter, let's get to know you a little bit. First of all, uh, tell, who is Peter King? Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to become a writer. Well, um, over the years, I've done a number of things. Um, I was in China, teaching in China, I was in the Navy, I was in public service, consulting and all that sort of stuff. And then with COVID, I came back and all of a sudden, uh, what do I do now? Hmm. Happening here. Okay, there we go. Uh, what do I do now? And um, I don't know what's happening. Okay. And um, I started, uh, one of the things I've sort of done through life is to ask myself, what if? You know, what if I did this? What would happen? And uh, in 1977, when the Queen was here, I posed myself the question and I said, what, would, what if I invited the Queen to come and meet, you know, do something that I was hosting? And of course, everyone said, yeah, well, go ahead, you know, good luck. Well, it, the bottom line was she came. So I hosted her for a couple of uh, hours, which was great. And that led me to think, well, what else, what if? So I'm reading about, go, uh, fast forward about four years now, to, to four years ago rather, and I'm reading about the dispute in the South China Seas. And as you probably know, we gave up Hong, uh, Britain gave up Hong Kong in 1977 and that was fine. And I thought, well, what if there was still a little, one of these little Hong Islands in the middle of the South China Sea that nobody knew about? And that was the subject of my first novel to try and uh, deal with the, that question. And I self-published that. And I'll tell you right now, never again. 
And then the second vo uh, volume was a sequel to the first. And uh, a fellow rowing coach of mine, Sean Dowd, recommended Lizzie. And Lizzie came back and said, here, traditional contract. Well, that was it. What, uh, what she didn't point out is that writing the book is one thing. It's the afterwork, the aftershock mm -hmm. that you have to go through. You know, and she's great at this. Yeah, well, you should do this. I am not computer literate. I am not a marketer. I hate pushing myself, <laughs> but I'm told I have to do all that. But unfortunately, I'm now into novel number three. Amazing. Well, congratulations. That's fantastic. And you've, you've, you've spoken about the process of working with, uh, with Liz uh, and, and, and her company and, and the benefits of that. So uh, Liz, why don't you talk to us a little bit about that? Because uh, obviously we're, you're, you're finding a, a real mine of talent right here in Cornwall and SDNG uh, as well as across the world. But uh, for anybody watching that may want to get into this sort of thing, they have that book idea or they've been writing something, talk to me about the process and how people can get involved with you and the work that you do with them. Um, sure, no problem. Um, so basically when a writer comes to me with a book, I read it over and then if I like the book, I offer them a traditional contract. And what that means is I do all of the work or outsource it out for editing, cover artwork, everything. So at the end of the day, I'm investing in them as a person and I believe in their book and what it entails. So anybody that comes to me with this and I believe in their book, then I will stand behind it 100% and market them and get their book out there for the world to see. That is fantastic. Uh, so I'll put you on the spot then. <laughs> and uh, with Victoria and, and Peter here, what was it about their, their works that really stood out to you and made you believe in them? Um, to be honest with you, I look for genuine and classic writing, um, something that really speaks to me with Victoria's book. Uh, she definitely has a way with words and it did bring an emotional component into that. So I did publish her right off the bat because I loved that part about her. Uh, with Peter King, his work is reminds me of Sherlock Holmes and Agatha Christie. Um, I love those classic reads and when I, I started reading his book, I, I had to publish him because he's a fantastic writer. So there are a lot of writers out there that maybe feel like they don't have the power to become an author, but they, there are so many things that they can do and have potential for. So please email me all your books because I want to read them. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, and you've alluded to the fact uh, that uh, uh, Peter is continuing to write as well. Uh, book number three, why don't you take us a little bit through the writing process, Peter? What's your sort of uh, uh, way of doing things and in, in, in the process of, of creating these novels? Well, I'd start out with a premise of some sort. I don't care. Let's take uh, the Gold Among the Trees, which is what Lizzie um, uh, very kindly uh, took on. And the premise there is that uh, there's a, a, a meek, mild, bald-headed, glass-bearded professor. <laughs> a little bit, you know, just in case you think it might be me. Anyway, um, he has a bee in his bonnet, and he wants to prove uh, a book that was written a few 20 or 30 years ago by a guy by the name of Gavin Menzies. And he claimed, Menzies claimed, that the Chinese had, in, had discovered America. And uh, so our little protagonist decides he wants to justify that. In the course of the gold, he's now sent out because he's asked to look for why is uh, somebody trying to move out of Hong Kong with all their treasures? Why are they looking for a 300-year-old ship? And so out he goes to look for it. But um, as he's doing all this, an indigenous woman gets murdered on the reservation nearby. Some artifacts get stolen from the one of the big museums in uh, Vancouver. A local philanthropist is murdered in his library. And one of the faculty members is out to eviscerate my protagonist on the grounds of pure jealousy and so forth. So I throw these scenes in and there they sit, and then I realize, uh oh, I've created something, I better solve it. 
and it sort of trickles down and follows from that. Now, the interesting thing is, I just got a question today from someone else. Am I what he calls a, uh, a planner or a pantser? I have no idea what that was, but the bottom line is, I'm told, a planner sits there and he says, here's where it's going to start and here's where it's going to finish, so you just have to fill that in. I can't do that. I have no idea where it's going to end up. Wow. That's but, you know, wow. but it's fun because you, you throw in something, you know, you say, this is getting boring, let's see what we can throw in. It's sort of like a cook, you know, you're cooking away, oh, this is, you know, let me see, put a little bit of this in and whoops, too much, not enough. And you just keep on going until suddenly you realize you run out of steam. <laughs> Well, that is fantastic. So book three on the way, uh, two editions uh, or two novels already uh, released, including one uh, with your company. And we're going to talk about that a little later, how people can get their hands on all of these works. Uh, but Victoria, obviously your work is very personal. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure the writing experience is very cathartic. Uh, now that you've got one published, what does the future hold? So I have many different books in the working. It's just I have a four-year-old, so usually anytime I do sit down and write now, I usually end up getting distracted, and uh, which is okay. But I have one, it's a self-help book that I just started recently, and then I also have a fiction novel that I technically started back in 2018, which is a very long process to finish as well for me, because for me it's more or less sitting down and getting the time to sit there and focus. But I do write poetry every day. I actually have a poetry page on Instagram that I usually do little poems that I feel in the moment and I post to that page and I've written another poem just recently in this month about how I've been feeling and it's just I can't stop writing I have a blog as well so in general I write all the time I just uh, this is the first time my stuff has ever actually been put out there and I'm excited to see where it goes and I'm very grateful for everyone who has purchased it already and I'm very thankful for family and friends who have been supporting me too because they've been really just getting the ball rolling and sharing it with everyone too so oh that's fantastic so liz the important question is how can uh, viewers get their hands on uh, on either book or both books if they'd mm -hmm. like to or any of the uh, other novels that you publish okay well you can go on the elite lizard Dot ca to get the book there or you can go on amazon or barnes and noble it's basically worldwide so you can grab the book just uh, type in the title and the author and you're good to go. Fantastic. Well, I th want to thank all three of you for joining us today. I wish you the best of luck and uh, it's been a pleasure speaking with all three of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.